There's one particular individual uh, we believe we've identified that the Prophet Joseph Smith indicated he had seen in vision that was his maternal ancestor. His name is John Lothrop. Orson Pratt is our source for this. In 1853, he wrote to his brother Parley. I have published the history and genealogy of Joseph Smith as written before his death. This included six or seven generations of his ancestry. You will recollect that Joseph had a vision and saw that our fathers and his all sprang from the same man a few generations ago. I should be pleased to trace both genealogies back to their junction if it be possible. Orson at that time, in 1853, they still didn't know who the individual was. And from what we can tell, that's John Lothrop. And John Lothrop is not only an ancestor of the Pratts and the Smiths, but also of, of Oliver Cowdery and Wilford Woodruff. In fact, uh, he's ancestor of residence of the United States. Now see the hand of the Lord become even more evident in the life of a special reformer whose name was John Lathrop, who was born in 1584 in Yorkshire, England. He died in 1653 in Massachusetts. John Lathrop was a minister in the Church of England. He firmly declared that the gospel should be taught more freely to the common people and that they should be able to read the Bible for themselves. He was arrested for his teachings, along with about 42 of his followers. John Lothar began as a pastor in England, and uh, he was in Egerton in England in the early 1600s. And when he broke away from the Church of England, he was actually thrown in prison for doing so. And our indications are he was put into Newgate Prison for some time. He left behind in, the, in his imprisonment a, a family. And while he's in prison, his wife dies. The Church of England didn't know what to do with him because he had such a large following. Finally, he was released from prison on condition that he would leave England. So John Lathrop packed up his few belongings and came to America with his children and many of his followers. And that's when John comes to the colonies at that time, or to New England, and sets up his own congregations. One of them that he sets up as he moves with his congregation is in Barnstable. And when he's there, they live according to the Bible as closely as we've ever found any group. If you want to look for someone who actually was a city set upon a hill as an example to the world, it would be this community that John Lothrop is able to set up. Uh, being that uh, they did not need any policemen, they didn't need a court, magistrates, because they treated one another as Christians in the community during that time. It must have been something like the city of Enoch with Zion, or the Zion society that existed after the time of the Savior's visit to the Nephites. The Sturgis Library here in Barnstable, Massachusetts, includes a home that was originally built about 1645 by early colonist and religious reformer John Lothrop. In uh, a room that was part of the original home of John Lothrop, they have on display a Bible that belonged to John Lothrop. He had purchased it from Robert Barker in London back in 1605. So when he sells in 1634 to the Americas, he's bringing with him a Bible that he's used for nearly 30 years. It's a well-read Bible, and they have that Bible on display. And in the Bible, it actually shows that during one of the, during the crossing, apparently, this is the story they have, 
that while he was reading the Bible, he read it by candlelight. This would be in the ship or in the ocean. And some of the wax from the candle actually fell upon the pages of the Bible and burned through the pages. The Bible on display shows a hand repaired page of the Bible with handwritten words that apparently John Lothrop knew from memory. In 1638, Robert Smith, a sturdy yeoman from England, emigrated to the New World. He settled in Essex County, Massachusetts. The privately owned New England style home that now exists on the Smith Homestead site was built in the 19th century. But the Dorman Smith House, which used to be on the site, was the birthplace of Joseph Smith Sr. The paternal ancestors to live here were Robert, Samuel, his son also named Samuel, Asel, and Joseph Sr., the prophet's father. On July 12, 1771, Asel Smith and his wife Mary Duty had a son whom they named Joseph. We know him as Father Smith. He married Lucy Mack who was the daughter of Solomon and Lydia Mack. Now that may not mean very much until you realize that John Lathrop was the fourth great grandfather of Lucy Mack Smith. It was Asel Smith who made this remarkable statement. It has been borne in upon my soul that one of my descendants will promulgate a work to revolutionize the world of religious faith. When Asel Smith receives the Book of Mormon from his son, Joseph Smith Sr., he was very receptive. In the summer of 1830, after the publication of the Book of Mormon and the organization of the Church of Christ, Joseph Smith Sr. visited his aged father, who at that time lived in St. Lawrence County, New York. The believing blood of Israel flowed in Asel's veins, and the paternal grandfather of the prophet received the message of the restoration carried by his missionary son. John Smith, Asel's eighth child, who was present at the time, wrote, The subject of the Book of Mormon was introduced. Father received with gladness that which Joseph communicated and remarked that he had always expected that something would appear to make known the true gospel. A grandson, George A. Smith reported, my grandfather Asel fully believed the Book of Mormon, which he read nearly through, although in his 88th year without the aid of glasses. Sadly, Asel was not baptized because of his weakened and aged condition, and he died soon thereafter. Being that uh, Joseph Smith's ancestry came from that time period of the colonizing of New England and then the Revolutionary War, uh, near equal with their passion for religious liberty is the liberty that comes through the Revolutionary War and then the Constitution of the United States, the independence from England. Samuel II was captain in George Washington's army and his son Asel was in his company as they served their country during the Revolutionary War. Joseph Smith indicated, it is a love of liberty which inspires my soul. Civil and religious liberty were diffused into my soul by my grandfathers while they dandled me on their knees. He took great comfort in knowing that the hand of the Lord had prepared a place where people could have religious freedom. Asel Smith and his family, including Joseph Smith Sr., moved from the home in Topsville, Massachusetts in 1791. 
and they then moved to Ipswich, Massachusetts, and then later to Tunbridge, Vermont, which will become important because that's where the Smiths and the Macs meet. Part three of Tapestry of Faith will focus on the Prophet Joseph Smith's ancestors and family in Vermont and New Hampshire, including original homes and buildings, as well as a visit to the Tunbridge, Vermont town office showing the original entries of Joseph and Lucy Mack Smith's marriage and the birth of their first children.